this is Josh Holyfield, and welcome to another episode of Make America Swole Again. A no bullshit, no sugarcoating, snowflake free podcast where I teach you how to step out of your comfort zone, stop dreaming, and start smashing your goals in fitness and in life. What's up, everybody? Josh Holyfield here. Welcome back to Make America Swole Again. What's up, Dave? Good to see you, brother. Hey, I'm glad to see you guys are all showing up tonight. It's kind of cool. I'm getting more and more messages during the day from folks asking about, um, hey, you're going to be on live tonight? You know, what are you going to talk about? Blah, blah, blah. So it tells me that you guys enjoy this stuff. You like to get on here and interact with me. I think that's pretty cool. It's something that I really enjoy doing. Absolutely love getting on here and chatting with you guys. Uh, of course, answer all your questions. Mike, what's up, brother? Good to see you. Um, and so if you're new, I know that we just got a few people. Typically it takes a few minutes for people to stream in here. Uh, just know that the entire purpose of this podcast is for me to get on here and keep you guys, help to keep you guys on track, give you guys information as I receive it. Uh, hopefully explain things about fitness and nutrition that can help you to understand in a more simple format. Uh, but it's also so that I can get to know you, right? And it doesn't really make sense for me to be, uh, you know, building this go-getter community, uh, focusing on getting the brotherhood uh, all, you know, built up and having you guys in there if I don't know who you are. So... My favorite, absolute favorite thing about Tuesdays is that I have the ability to get on here and see all your guys' beautiful, shining text messages here in the chat. <laughs> so um, I got a couple of random things that I want to talk about, and I just want to tell you guys something real quick before we get started. Um, just so you're aware, um, I... <laughs> I did uh, leave a poker game to come over here and do this. Yes, yeah, I left a poker game. Now, let's be honest with you, we had some kids playing, so it was a little bit slow. And uh, my stepfather is a little bit of a control freak, so it can become a little bit boring while listening to him explain the game. But it was poker, and it's been a long time since I've played poker. <laughs> <laughs> JC, what's up, man? James, what's up, brother? He said, James texted me at like 8.50. He's like, hey, you're going to be on time tonight? And I'm like, yeah, I'm walking over now. He said, jog. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? No, man. <laughs> We're not jogging anywhere. Jared, what's up, dude? Good to see you. Dave, you made it. Hell yeah, man. Uh, hopefully everything's going well with your knee. Uh, what's up, Tom? Good to see you, brother. Jim, what's up, man? JC, Dwayne, uh, what else, who else I got in here, Ryan, uh, Kirk, what's up man, good to see you brother, got some people watching and coming in from YouTube as well, that's awesome, um, so we're starting to get back into the swing of things, uh, North Carolina gyms are still unfortunately closed, um, at this point with California gyms opening, which is insane to me that California gyms opened before North Carolina gyms. Um, it's a little bit frustrating. What's up, Rosendo? Um, but we're still staying on track, doing our best. And it was kind of funny because, uh, you know, um, <clears throat> we were hanging out with some of the friends over there at the poker game. And he's like, man, you don't look like you've skipped a beat as far as the gym is concerned. And I'm like, well, it doesn't make sense for me to get onto a podcast every week and run a community that talks about staying motivated and keeping active and me deflate like a fucking water balloon once the gym's closed. So I've been doing my best to stay on track. Um, I've lost a little bit of weight, but as you guys know, I'm doing that 20 pounds in 12 weeks and I'm sitting really solid at about 230 pounds right now, which is about 12 pounds up from when I started three weeks ago, so we're on track. Um, my goal is 240. I wanna reach 240 by August. 
my uh, ankle surgery is tentatively it was actually scheduled for August fourth, um, but unfortunately, I got a I got a, a subpoena last week. I have to go in. If you guys recall, a couple months ago before COVID, I was hit by a car, and the guy who was um, who hit me with his car was charged with assault with a deadly weapon uh, because it was intentional. Long story behind that. I think there's a podcast clip on it from a few months ago, um, and so I contacted the DA and I'm like, "Hey, look." <laughs> We've got video evidence. We've got all the evidence to put this guy away. You know, what do I need to do to prevent this case from getting swept under the under the rug or getting pled out? I'm volunteering myself. Whatever you need. And uh, they subpoenaed me to testify on the same day that uh, I'm supposed to get my ankle surgery. So it's probably going to have to be the the Tuesday after. Um, so we'll see what happens. The goal is uh, to get that ankle surgery knocked out sometime during the month of August. So if I can get myself to a nice, healthy 240 by then, um, that'll be really I'll make me really happy. It's been a while since I've been 240, probably a couple years. Um, Dave, he said, mind muscle connection, the importance of it now. It's working for me. Yeah, man. Kirk says his shoulder still hurts, but he's going to hit legs and abs as soon as work cooperates. Awesome, brother. Uh, hey, what's up, Jason? Good to see you, man. Brent, what's up, man? It's been a while. I haven't talked to you. Hope you're doing well. Um, Dane said, I've been lazy since the quarantine, but trying to get back. I've been feeling super bloated after eating. You got any insight? Yeah, well, I can answer that question for you. Um, I'll get to that. So if you guys don't remember, or if you weren't around, uh, earlier this, I think it was Monday morning, yeah, yesterday morning, I jumped online and I was like, hey, I really like the idea of going live, you know, um, just the concept of me getting on here and being able to actually interact with you guys in real time is, it makes a huge difference. Um, and it also, to be quite frank with you, saves me a lot of time and energy because I'm not having to go back and reply to comments throughout the entire day, right? I can just respond to comments as they come in when I'm live. So <laughs> rather than posting all these videos, I think I'm going to be spending a lot more time going live for you guys. Uh, this is also a method that I'm going to start incorporating to uh, give you guys trainings and information. So like if you're part of the Failure Forward Growth Program and that's something that you're working on with me, um, I'll be introducing video trainings on how to do certain things related to fitness and nutrition. Uh, and those will be live recordings that I do inside of that private group. Um, and then obviously I'll be going live in the, in the, you know, Josh Holyfield goal getters group to help you guys with, uh, exercises and stuff like that. So once I have free reign, open access to the gym again, you'll probably see like a lot of videos of me going live, like, my workouts and how I do things and tempos and things like that and kind of what it looks like. Um, so you guys can kind of get an idea of what the intensity level should look like when you guys are lifting. And then obviously, so I can interact with you uh, during the lifts so I can answer your questions for why I'm doing it this way or that way or whatever. Um, Josh Anderson, just getting off the tractor. <laughs> Legs later tonight. Hell yeah, man. Um, Jason said he feels better than ever. That's awesome, dude. Um, cool. So on the live video this week, um, I brought on a few one-on-one -on -one clients last week. And um, one of the things that I focus on when we're trying to, you know, when we're doing the one-on-one -on -one training isn't just that gym and nutrition, but it's also like that mindset and mentality piece, right? And it's a really big deal because when you walk into it with, uh, you know, into your day or into your goals or into the gym or anything you do with the right mindset, your chances of being successful and fulfilled from that activity are going to be greatly increased. Um, and so 
that's kind of the idea behind me going live yesterday was, hey, you guys should be starting Mondays with a fucking perfect with a purpose. You should be starting every day with a purpose. Right? So that means waking up when you wake up in the morning, you have a set routine that you walk through each day that gets you in the mindset to you know successfully complete that day. Right? So for some people like I said, that's going to the gym in the morning. You know, very first thing you do is wake up in the morning, get yourself some food in your belly, head to the gym and lift, and then come home and uh, get cleaned up and go to work. For others, it's getting up in the morning and going to work, and then you, you, uh, you know, eat before you go, and then you lift later in the day. Whatever the case may be, whatever your morning schedule is, it needs to be consistent, it needs to be calculated. And it needs to be with purpose. And there's a reason for that, right? And if you guys recall, a couple months ago, I posted a video by Admiral McRaven, who's the former SOCOM commander, Special Operations Command, okay? And he uh, talked about making your bed. You start your day by making your bed. And basically, the whole idea behind this is, even if your day sucked... You get home and you can, you know, finish out your day with that accomplishment that you made your bed and get into a, you know, a nice, comfortable, um, well put together bed to end your day. But not just that, when you start your day and you've completed a task with purpose and intent, that puts you on a track of building momentum for success throughout the remainder of your day. Right? So one task leads to another task, which leads to another task, which means, you know, by the end of the day, you're basically, you know, finishing out that day with success. Okay. Hey, Jennifer, what's up? Josh, I'm struggling with working a 12 hour shift and going to the gym. I've been there, man. And here's what I'll tell you. Put your nose down to the grindstone, my friend. Make it rain. If you want it, you'll get it. If you want it you'll do it thomas said tom said legs are noodles <laughs> um yeah man so I, i'll actually talk about your routine a little here in a little bit i kind of want to point that that point out to some of those folks um she said all the mind fuckery <laughs> what's up courtney um <clears throat> cool i'm just scrolling scrolling through these comments here to make sure i don't miss anything all right so what does that mean for you how can you start your day with a purpose? And here's what I'll say. I don't have a container with me, but I wanted to kind of explain this concept. I want you to picture you have a, a big jar, a container, right? And that container is your goal, right? Um, and the way that you fill that container and when that container is completely and 100% full, that will represent the success that you have in achieving that goal. Okay? So you have a bunch of stuff, right? You've got some big rocks. You've got some smaller size rocks. You've got some sand. You've got all these different size things. And let's say these big rocks, obviously, you're going to want to put those into your jar first to make them fit. Those big rocks... They represent the big things, the big concepts or changes that you need to be making, right? So as an example, like if I want to achieve a goal of losing 50 pounds, well, one of my big rocks is going to be to make sure I exercise, put that in there, okay? One of my other big rocks is to make sure that I'm eating right, put that in there. Another one of the big rocks is going to make sure that I'm uh, sleeping, and let's say a fourth big rock is uh, making sure that I'm staying active during the day. Okay, those are big, large, overarching concepts. They fill up the majority of the container, but there's all this empty space in between. Okay, then I have these smaller rocks 
that I can start putting in there. And those are like my uh, medial tasks, right? Like as an example, if I wanna start going to the gym. Well, you're gonna need your routine, okay? Uh, you're gonna need you know, daily routine or a program to fit in there. You're gonna need a set of schedules so that you're going each day. Those are all small rocks. With my nutrition, it's gonna be one meal at a time or my meal plan, okay? Uh, my calories and my macros, and I'm counting those, and my meal prep, all those small actions, okay? If I'm sleeping, I need to make sure that by the end of the day at 9, 10 o'clock or whatever time I go to sleep, I'm, you know, settling down and turning off my phone and getting myself the ability to wind down so I can get to bed on time, right? Those are our small tasks and our small things. And then what we do to actually secure success and make sure that jar is completely and 100% full is by filling it the rest away with all the rest of the sand that we have, okay? And I'll, I'll make you guys a video that shows this visually so you can see it a little bit better. But the idea is that small, that sand, and what's really going to secure success are all those minor little things that you need to do right those small decisions where it requires self-control and discipline to stay on track and when you're consistent with those over time that's how you achieve the large overarching goal and what i tell you guys all the time is like making taking baby steps all right now as long as i'm just taking a little making a little bit of progress forward I'm further down my path than I was yesterday. If I do nothing, I'm actually setting myself back. Okay, so the goal is, no matter what it is, whatever your goal, you want to make some type of progress each day. No matter what. And it may not seem like a lot today, but 1% adds up. Especially when you have 365 days to work with, right? Um, so my advice to you is rather than spending all of your time focused on that big goal that you're trying to achieve and wondering why you're not making that progress and, wonder, and putting pressure on yourself and stressing yourself out because you're not seeing the change and it's not visible to you immediately, Focus on those small steps, on the minute details, right? Something as simple as making your bed in the morning sets you up to now, okay, I made my bed. Next step is to go eat my breakfast. Next step is to go hit the gym. Next step is to go home from the gym and fucking get myself washed up. Next step is to go to work, right? And you just take it step by step. It doesn't sound hard to make a commitment to yourself to say, hey, when I wake up tomorrow morning, I'm going to make my bed. And if you make that type of commitment to yourself and you can't fulfill it, you don't have the integrity with yourself or the, the discipline or the, you know, whatever to accomplish that task. Then how are you going to expect to be able to accomplish the task of losing 50 pounds? If you can't do something as small as make your bed, right? And that's kind of the idea behind this whole failure forward concept that we've begun working on is we're going to teach you guys the baseline, very basic, minute changes to your lifestyle and routine that will eventually add up and lead to the achievement and accomplishment of these very large goals. I don't want you focused on the big goals. I want you focused on the small things. That's as simple as making sure that you reach failure on every set. And that's why I tell you, every rep, every set counts. Because if I shortchange myself on one set, sure enough, I'm going to shortchange myself on another, and then another, and then another. And that adds up. Just in the same way the accomplishment of my small goals adds up, the failure to accomplish those small goals also adds up to failure. Okay? 
you always have to practice the fundamentals first and then you'll see progress towards the large goal right <clears throat> Somebody said, I love that video. Yeah, man, it's a great one. If you're lacking motivation, watch that Admiral McRaven. I think it's a commencement speech for the SEAL school. Uh, my calves won't grow. <laughs> well, we can talk about growing any muscle, but I'll tell you in here in a second. What's up, brothers and sisters? Nolan, good to see you, brother. Jennifer said, keep motivated. Keep your mind on the goal. Keep your schedule. Keeping your routine, routine on track. Absolutely. <clears throat> so this week, I really want you guys to focus on what are the small things that I'm failing at? And how can I improve there? Right? And these are simple, very minor details, right? When I get a new client, the last thing I'm going to do is say, hey, this is what you're doing now. We're going to completely flip your entire life upside down. And I want you to do this now. It's, you'll never be successful if you try to do it that way. One thing at a time. Right? So a couple examples. I've got one client I talked about earlier or yesterday during the live video. She works at a, um, at, she works in a home office at a desk eight hours a day five days a week, completely and 100% sedentary, right? It's hard to sit for that long, like legit. That I mean, think about it. Like by the time you're done sitting through an eight hour shift, staring at a computer screen, I can guarantee you that you're probably fucking absolutely exhausted, okay? You're your eyes are tired, your body's tired, your back hurts. The last thing you want to do is get up and go get active because your body is literally drained. So what we did is we made a very minor change. Instead of being seated all day at work, I want you to stand. That's it. That's what we're going to start with. I want you to stand. Take a half an hour, convert your workspace into a standing workspace. I want you to stand. And what does that do? Well, I can tell you from personal experience, because here's why. After having that discussion with her, I was like, dude, I sit for six to eight, sometimes longer hours a day at my desk working on joshholyfield.com. This is a change that I should be making in my life. So here we are. I'm at a standing desk. Why? Because I want to make sure that the advice that I'm giving to a person and the, the changes that I want my clients to make are something that I can speak to from experience. And here's what I can tell you. I've had this standing desk for two days now. And I am just being here with the ability to move around. I have more energy. I'm more involved in what I'm doing. I'm active. And not just that, but it, it gives me less reason to prevent myself from getting up and moving away if I need to go do something. If I, and if I come back, my desk is here for me. It's no longer me planting myself here in a computer, you know, in, in this position with my shoulders rolled forward, my back just dying while I'm sitting here typing away, telling you guys how to live your lives and giving you all this motivation. Now, I'm living the advice that I'm giving, practicing what I'm preaching. So now when I say, hey man, have you tried converting your desk to a standing desk? Here's what it did for me. I can speak to that and say, dude, it makes a huge difference. Even my performance in Call of Duty while I'm standing instead of sitting when I'm playing my video game on here is better because I'm more focused, right? When you sit down and you're sedentary, your body is going to eventually turn off. It's going to start to shut down. You're going to not be as focused. Your mental agility is going to decrease, right? 
And it's going to be difficult. And not just that, but the what, what will happen is you're going to find yourself in this place where you're like, I'm bored, man. Next thing you know, you're snacking. You got a table full of drinks and you're drinking all this, these terrible carb calorie full, uh, you know, juices and energy drinks to keep yourself awake. When if you're standing, shit, if I'm hungry, go to the kitchen, right? And so just making that minor change completely changes your, 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 your resting metabolism because your body's not sedentary. Even it, even standing here like this, just moving around like this, or just like you guys have seen me on the video, I'm burning calories. And if you're not used to sitting at a standing desk, you're gonna notice, you're gonna to start to feel your hams tighten up, your calves are gonna tighten up, right? You're gonna kind of feel it, you're not in your lower back if you're overweight, and it's gonna be like, man, just as simple as standing here is kind of wearing me out. But then your body's gonna get used to it. Your, your core is gonna get stronger, your hams are gonna get stronger, your calves are gonna get stronger, all that stuff, you're improving your body right <clears throat> the standing just desk is no joke i've also found that i'm more productive increases your focus okay <laughs> she said he makes you get up early beware no listen here okay so another one of my clients he um he works in a job where he's sedentary also but his situation is different. He's a supervisor at a job site. He spends a lot of his time sitting in his vehicle, you know, supervising from afar, for lack of a better term. And so what he's found is like during his shift, he spends so much time in his vehicle that he gets bored and eats. So the question I had was like, hey man, like what's preventing you from getting out of your truck during your shift? Well, nothing. Okay. Well, Start getting out of your truck. You know, make it a point every hour to go and just do your rounds at the job site. Check in with the employees, see how progress is going. You know, be laid back about it. They don't, you don't want your employees to think that you're like looking over their shoulder. And sure, you might get a couple of weird looks at first, but after a while, making that small change is not only gonna improve your, your, your activity levels throughout the day and your energy levels throughout the day, but it's also going to improve the relationship that you have with your employees because they're, you're showing that as a supervisor and a boss, you want to be involved in what they're doing, not just sitting in your truck collecting a check, right? Because you know, just like anybody, the perspective from folks at the bottom of the totem pole looking at folks at the top of the totem pole, well, that guy, guy doesn't do shit, right? The number one way that you can gain respect as a leader in the workspace, in the workplace, is by not being afraid to get your fucking hands dirty. And I can tell you from personal experience, my knowledge of that uh, concept comes directly from um, my experience serving in the military. The absolute best leaders that I had during my time serving were the ones who had no problems being involved with what the enlisted guys were doing. Hey, what are you guys working on down here? Okay, come on, let's do it. Lead from the front. Right? <clears throat> so the idea behind this, and the reason I wanted to talk about this this week, is because when you make these minor, it's, these are minor changes. I mean, something as simple as converting your desk to a standing desk. Or getting out of your vehicle every hour and doing a walk, taking a walk. Or waking up a half an hour early than you're used to w waking up so that you can go and walk your dog. Or making your bed. Or whatever it is. When you make these minor changes for, this, for a purpose to keep you more active and engaged in the things that you're doing, you're going to feel better. And the idea and the goal is for you to increase... The amount of energy that you have throughout your day but that doesn't make sense josh we're adding the gym so how is it that i'm going to have more energy well <laughs> believe it or not the more active you are the more energy you're going to have 
we as grown adults, most people here, I, I'm assuming, are at least 30, right? Raise your hand if you sit down on the couch at any point in time during the day to watch TV or watch a movie. Within 30 minutes, you'll have a hard time not falling asleep. <laughs> Go ahead and type yes in the chat if it's difficult for you to sit down and watch television without falling asleep on the couch. Right? When your body's not active, when your body's not engaged, when your mind isn't active, when your body's not engaged, it will shut down. It's, you're constantly adapting, right? Constantly. Everything that you do, every stimulus that's coming into your mind, you're adapting. So if you change your routine where it requires that you're more active, it requires that you're more focused, it requires that you're doing more, your body's going to be like, oh shit, this person's actually doing something. I should probably make sure that he's mentally agile. He's not drowsy. You're going to start to adapt to those requirements to your surroundings. And suddenly you're going to feel more energetic. Okay. There you go. Look at all the comments. I swear I have narcolepsy. <laughs> yes, yes. Jacob said for sure. Fuck yeah. Right? The point is... If you don't want to be exhausted, then you need to force yourself out of that state of sedentary, being sedentary. When you get home from work, don't grab a beer and sit down on the chair and watch TV. Keep going. Right? And then what, what will happen is now by the time it's, you know... 9, 10, or whatever your bedtime is, when you've stayed active up until that point, your body's going to be like, okay, bedtime. <sighs> you're not going to, you're going to have less difficult of a time getting to sleep. And you're going to, you're teaching your body, okay, we're going until here. And then when you get to that bedtime, take your phone, put it on silent, turn off your TV. Go to bed. Right? I'm actually, actually, my wife is at, is the one who really likes to watch TV when we go to sleep. That's her thing. She loves, she has to have something on to fall asleep. Um, that's kind of a habit that I've picked up from her. But I'll be honest with you, if I decided we're no longer watching television when we go to sleep, she'd probably freak out. <laughs> she always, she, between fans and having something on the TV, those are like major requirements for her. She has to have a fan blowing. So here we are in June with the thickest comforter on the planet because A, it's cute, and B, because she has my ce the ceiling fan that I put in there for her going at full blast with the AC on. I'm like sleeping. <laughs> Dave said, I'm old. Isn't that what old people do? <laughs> Jacob said, I fall asleep at meetings at work. Does shock therapy help? Um, here's what I'll advise to you uh, to kind of to kind of swing the uh, change the subject a little bit, Dave. So um, when I went to the doctor for my lower back, I'm still waiting on the results to come back from the MRI and the VA to tell me what's going on with it. Maybe something I have to get surgery on as well. Um, part of my physical therapy was um, giving me what's called a TENS unit. It was basically shock therapy. They were really little diodes. You put them on your back. And the idea behind those diodes is to do nothing more than loosen the muscles. So what happens is when you have an injury, your muscles will tighten up and squeeze that part and they get really tense and inflamed. And that's your body's way of protecting your muscle, your, your nervous system and your skeleton, right? So like if I sprang my ankle or I sprang my elbow or I dislocate my shoulder, my muscles will spasm and tighten. 
and they become very inflamed and sore. And that's your body's way of immobilizing that part of your body. It's very common in people's lower back. You'll feel your back is like really tight and it hurts and you're like, oh my God, right? And so what, they, what you do is you put these TENS units on, which is these little diodes, and it sends an electric pulse through the muscle and basically forces it to relax. So if you've ever, if you've ever been to a chiropractor, what they'll do a lot of times for people who are really tight before they do an adjustment is they'll put a TENS unit on the muscles in the spine. They'll run you on that for about 20 or 30 minutes and then they'll adjust you because now your muscles are relaxed and stuff. And so um, that's what the electrotherapy does, okay? It's not necessarily going to help you heal faster. It's just going to force your muscles to relax, okay? <clears throat> He said, I'll finish up tomorrow. I'll stay swole. Good night, brother. T minus 20 to bedtime. AM crew up at four. That's right, brother. Work starts tomorrow, brother. I'm glad. Uh, all right. Kirk said, just had a chiropractor appointment today. First one since the shutdown. Yes, temporary relief. Exactly, Kyle. Um, <clears throat> thank you for that input, brother. Kyle said, TENS units numb the nerves that are sending the signals to your brain to tense the muscles. Yes. So he provided a more technical explanation. As you guys are aware, I'm used to teaching Marines. So the explanations that I give are, um, basically my goal is to make it so that, um, you can color the explanation with a crayon so then you can eat it when you're done, right? Because you know how... Marines love to eat crayons. <clears throat> uh, Non-electrical methods. So if you have tight muscles, I'll be honest with you, my favorite rub, personal experience, is Tiger Balm. It comes in a little jar about this big. I think, do we have any of that Tiger Balm, babe? Somewhere. That means I'm not getting it. That's the wife translation. Um, muscle rub works and then obviously the most long term is stretching you guys need to be stretching all of my clients have a stretching regimen that they go through for mobility it's very important okay <laughs> JC laughed at that one he knows wife, wife translation <laughs> alright so going back to what I was talking about right Super important. The small things first. Right? Yeah, Tiger Bomb is awesome, brother. <laughs> I love it. She puts it on. She'll rub, give me a nice massage when it's when I'm feeling tight, especially my lower back. Sometimes I'll get a tweak in my neck. I'll put it on there. Um, as far as chiropractors are concerned... Um, there's mixed reviews. Are chiropractors really doctors? This, that, and the other. One of the things about chiropractors that they say is that if you go to see one, um, what can happen over time is you basically become reliant upon that adjustment, right? So I'm not really sure what the logic is, but I'm assuming that the lo logic has something to do along the lines to do with if I'm constantly popping these joints or, you know, back into place or my spine back into place it's going to loosen that cartilage there which is going to in turn make it easier to pop back out right it's almost like if i do this on a joint more you know you know too many times eventually i'm wearing that cartilage away and now it can slide out easier um, what i've found is that if i'm particularly having a hard time with lower back pain or discomfort in my neck or something like that um, I'll go to the chiropractor, I'll get an adjustment. Um, I think I, I probably haven't had one in like six months. Uh, so what I do is, is I use chiropractor, the chiropractor is almost like a, uh, a treatment for sp the symptom, not necessarily for like, uh, maintenance per se. 
right? So I'm not seeing the chiropractor every two weeks or every week or whatever just to do it. Like the only time I'll go is when I have the symptoms that are related to something to do with um, discomfort or, you know, a misaligned spine or hips, right? Um, Biofreeze, yeah. So my mom loves a biofreeze. It's good stuff too. Um, But again, right, it starts with stretching. Um, (laughs) She said, went to the chiropractor once and couldn't walk for three days, never went again. You'd be surprised, man. So, like, when I was a young when I was a young buck um, in the army or in in high school, I was a wrestler. Um, I had major back problems, lower back problems, especially during the peak of like my junior and senior years. I ended up going to the chiropractor, and he's like, "I don't understand why you're having this back pain," but come to find out one of the major reasons I was having this pain was because my wallet was so thick and I kept it in my back pocket. And so what happened was I would sit and my hips would be misaligned just when I'm sitting down in a relaxed state because I had that big wallet in my back pocket. And I had it like that for so long as a kid that Apparently, it just threw me off during a period of time where my body was developing and caused issues in my lower back. And so one of the things that I always learned was that you should always make sure that when you're seated or standing for any extended period of time, you want to make sure that your hips are in alignment. And that goes with the squat, right? So like I'm sure that a lot of you guys, when you squat, you'll have a tendency to kind of favor one side. Or lean one way or when it gets particularly difficult you'll find yourself kind of doing one of these and that is not not just doesn't have just to do with you having a dominant side it has to do with if you stand like this right if you ever find yourself like sitting in a meeting leaning on one hip women are really um are notorious for doing this right or if you kind of lean back on one side or whatever, like you have a tendency to throw your entire hips, your pelvis, and your spine out of alignment for doing that repeatedly for a long time. So one thing that you can practice when you're seated or standing is like what I like to do when I'm standing here at this desk or if I'm standing anywhere, I'll put myself in the same position that I squat in. Because I know that in my mind, if this is the if this is the best position that I can be standing in in order for me to put you know 500 pounds on my shoulders and squat it then it's probably the best position for me to just be standing there too right so what that means for me is I'm standing on the balls of my feet the majority of the weight is on my heels okay I'm using the front ball part of my feet for balance and they're a little bit more than shoulder width apart. And my toes are pointed slightly out. The same position that I'm in for a squat. And when I stand like this, you can actually feel your hips are aligned and straight. And so again, going back to foundations and building a foundation to be successful for things. If you're having trouble with hip alignment, sometimes the best way to do it is just to practice standing straight. Right. The whole purpose and idea behind lifting weights and being active is to be functional. Right. So let's practice basic function for your body's physiology. And then we can take those same ideas and apply them to more advanced movements. Such as um, squats or front squats or deadlifts or whatever. Right. Uh, what I heard that once you keep getting adjustments, the muscle memory will change and then you'll keep your spine in alignment. Right. So like I said before, there's varying studies, case studies and opinions about um, chiropractors and whether they're, you know, good for you for the long term or not. Um, what I have found is that they've been helpful. Okay. Um, 
Mike, I can cramp my hand screwing just by trying to stretch it. Very non-flexible. Um, and so that may also have to do with um, malnourishment um, typically when you are low in your micronutrients such as iron um, what is the other one it starts with a P they're in bananas I can't believe I just completely for forgot potassium right um, your muscles will have a tendency to cramp so it's important that that's part of the reason why I stress to you guys that the majority of your macronutrition should come from whole organic foods because that's where you're getting your micronutrients from. Okay. So we just talked about, um, I literally just had this conversation with one of the failure forward clients. He's like, man, I'm like, just got done lifting and I'm cramping. Well, it's two things, just like Jennifer said in there, water, but also your, your micronutrients, okay? So what I always suggest, and if you guys read my supplement guide, um, you need to make sure that you're consuming a gender-specific multivitamin. You don't know, need to go to GNC or to a supplement store and spend 40 to $50 for a bottle of multivitamins. You can get them on Amazon. They're just the same stuff for 8 or 10 bucks. If you don't like the gummies, they have them in the, in the pill form. Sorry, baby, just woke up. Give me a sec. So include that. If I was going to suggest any supplement for anybody, it would be your omegas, okay, your fish oil, your fatty acids, because your body's not naturally uh, making that. You need it, and it's typically something that you'd get from fish, which a lot of people don't include in their diet, so it's good to have fish oil. And then also the multivitamin. That would be a starting point first. Okay, We want to make sure that your macros and your micros are in line before you start introducing things like protein and creatine and BCAAs, aminos, all that stuff. Because if you have your nutrition in line, your requirement to have a pharmacy worth of fucking supplements to make up for that will be less. It's gonna be cheaper in the long run, right? So a lot of times a big complaint that people have is, well, it's just so expensive to buy organic or whole foods yet they have a monthly supplement bill of 100 to 200 dollars a lot of times if you were to eat right in the fir first place you wouldn't need the supplements that you're spending all this money on the only difference is, is whole foods doesn't have a fucking label on it that says something like advanced pre-workout compound designed to help maximize workout performance enhance mental focus and minimize recovery times ignite right so you read something like that and you're like, fuck, this is, I need this versus when I see, you know, a bushel of broccoli in the fucking grocery store, it doesn't tell me that it's going to increase my mental focus, but sure enough, it'll actually do a better job than the pre-workout will. Okay. Is it good to hang upside down? Like on a teeter hang up, uh, so my mom has one of those inverted tables that you can go on and you lay on it upside down. Um, I personally haven't used it. Uh, her, her husband speaks fucking, he has a really bad back. He's got like shrapnel and stuff in it from his time in the military. He loves it. He uses it. Um, I got a couple guys that I've worked with who have similar issues. They say they love it. Um, I, like I said, I personally haven't tried it, but everybody I talk to says they're fucking awesome. So the only thing is, is I've also heard of people getting stuck on those things. <laughs> so make sure you have a friend nearby or at least something to grab onto to help you back up because it would kind of suck to get stuck on one of those tables, right? <laughs> if you do, 
Uh, make sure that if you do try one for the first time, make sure that you set your phone up and record it so that you can send it to the group and show us how it went for you the first time. It'd be pretty funny. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> cool. So, like I said, guys, um, oh, let's see, for the females only, prenatal vitamins for before, during, and after pregnancy. Um, in turn, that means, number one, when you start getting your period, or two, during pregnancy, number three, up until menopause. Um, okay. <laughs> JC said an escape latch. Yeah, something you can grab at the top that releases your feet so you land on top of your head and crack your spine. I guess that would kind of cause the opposite effect, but hey, it's worth a shot, right? <laughs> um so yeah, like I said, the point of this podcast today, right, I just wanted to get on here real quickly. I really want you guys to start focusing on those small things. Um, if you need help and you're interested and it's something that you want to look at making a change to in your life and how you can make these small adjustments and maybe you're not sure where to start um, and you think maybe failure, fro failure forward would be something that's right for you, shoot me a message, man. And I will not only invite you to our private Failure Forward Facebook group, but I will also um, give you some personal advice to help you get there, okay? Um, so the goal with that group is to kind of introduce you guys to uh, what this one-on-one training, one -on -one training consists of, what it's like. Um, there are all of the clients that I have have been invited to that group, uh, and the idea behind it is to kind of give you guys, again, just like the goal getters brotherhood is, um, this is kind of taking it to the next step, looking for the folks who are really have that extreme level of commitment where they want to focus up and not just change their bodies, but change their minds. Okay. So if you're interested, let me know. I'll send you an invite to the group. We can kind of talk about what that would look like for you. All right. Um, and if you guys missed it, head over to the Facebook group and take a look at my video this week talking about nutrition. So I got super fancy, man. I even pulled up like a digital whiteboard and I explained what your resting metabolic rate is, how you should be consuming food based upon your activity levels, introduce the basic concepts of carb cycling, what that looks like, okay? I talked about carb consumption and how you use carbs as a tool to gain or lose, okay? I basically debunked the myths of carnivore diets, keto diets, paleo diets, all these fad diets that you guys hear about. I explained why those are dog shit, okay? And that's very important to me. Um, I gave you exact an exact blueprint for how to calculate your macros and calculate your carb consumption for the day. And you can use that, I guess, methodology for yourself so that you can build your own meal plan that's specific to your body and your goals, All right? So the idea behind my macro guide and you know my nutrition guides that I offer you guys are is so that I can teach you how to do it yourself, okay? Um, and so those concepts are there and I walked through them and answered questions. So if you missed that hour long video um, after this or sometime tomorrow, I'll go track it down. And if you need a link to it, I'll send it to you. Just shoot me a message. And, you know, like I said, my goal is to give you guys the tools that you need to be self-sufficient when it comes to this stuff, not just rely on me for my monthly meal plan that I offer or things like that. Okay. There's always going to be folks out there who need that little bit of extra help because of time or whatever, which is why I offer those other options. Um, but I still want to make the actual resource available to you for free so that you can be successful with my programming no matter what direction you choose to go, okay? So if you need a, uh, a link to that video or you just want to review the guide, shoot me a message, I'll send it to you. Most of you guys have probably already seen the macronutrition guide. 
my advice to you is to make sure that you take a look and check that thing periodically because I do update it here and there. And just so you guys know, for your own knowledge, I am, um, I decided to pick up a few classes this semester. I started last week or two weeks ago. Uh, and I am now taking a follow-on strength and conditioning program as well as another nutrition class so that I can make sure that I'm brushed up on the most recent updates to formal education in that regard. So, go, go. It's super important for me to stay relevant, and this is one of the things that I'm doing to stay relevant and consistent for you guys, right, is providing that or learning that information, okay? Dave said, check in with you next week. Go get more info on surgery. Citrus Heights. Oh, shit. That's where I, those are my stomping grounds, man. That's where I grew up. Nolan, yeah. I'd like to see you in that group if you're not already, Nolan. Uh, you too, Jennifer, as well as you. I know JC's in there. I've got a bunch of you guys. Most of my podcast listeners are um, folks who are already part of Failure Forward. So... Give me, shoot me a message. Brent, I'd like to see you in there, man. You as well. Um, I know Dave's already there, patiently waiting for his tank tops. I really appreciate that, man. I understand the frustration. I'm pretty frustrated as well. Um, but we'll, we'll get this, this fucking, this t-shirt bullshit figured out. All right. Um, so, yeah, like I said the other day on the call, uh, a couple updates for you guys. First is, I contacted the fulfillment company for the shirts. Last week, they printed and sent 500,000 shirts. That's how far they were behind. They're projected to send another 500,000 this week. As it stands right now, we have 18, or as it stood yesterday when I looked, we had 18 um, pending orders that people were waiting on. Um, but that 18 hopefully will fall within that 500,000 this week or next week. So they're on track for getting caught up following COVID. North Carolina has lifted a lot of those restrictions, but like I said before, gyms starting still aren't even open. I think governor Roy Cooper went and took a fucking nap for the last two, three weeks because I haven't heard anything from him. Uh, as far as changes to the their three-step phased plan. Um, so we're kind of just sitting on our hands. Um, Nathaniel Scott just got back from the gym. Leg day number two. Hell yeah, man. He said, I just crawled to my phone. <laughs> um, so because leg day we are so notorious i think eventually what we're going to do is offer a josh holyfield branded walker or cane that you can buy let me know if you guys would be interested in something like that <laughs> you get an official josh holyfield walker for gym day, for leg day you can bring it in your gym bag and we'll, we'll make it so that it's retractable you know you can pull it out of your gym bag and then fucking <laughs> kind of just have it so that you're ready to go after leg day i think that'd be pretty fucking hilarious dominic what's up dude i haven't gotten the chance to uh review your video but i will take a look this evening take it easy dave have a good night man um <clears throat> said yes please <laughs> get you a, a jh branded walker retractable walker we're gonna have to look into that <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> All right. Tactical Walker and OD Green. Oh, God. <laughs> um, one more update for you guys. So we actually, I just got the first sample of the new and improved Ignite pre-workout. This is only going to be available in the fruit punch. Let me see if I have another one down here. So if you guys remember, this is the old pre-workout. 
I was a little bit annoyed with the labels because they were cut off here. You could see the white. It looked like it was almost cut off here where the label is. Um, but we've got new containers, new labels for the pre-workout. They're much nicer. The serving size or the serving amount is the same. I believe the serving size is a little bit smaller. Okay, and we've made some minor adjustments to the formula okay so the major adjustment to the formula has to do with the energy and endurance focus matrix okay it doesn't look like there's any huge changes to the uh, amount of creatine the l-arginine or the beta alanine or caffeine that are in it okay but just so you guys know there is some minor adjustments to the proprietary blend that's in the in there which includes the amount of taurine the amount of uh l-citrulline okay and the gly glycosa glycosamine glycosoxamine and the tyrosine okay so um i've tried this not a huge difference there is more citrulline um, which is going to feel a little, you're going to feel a little bit more of a jolt type energy um, and a little bit more long term focus with the new fruit punch. Just so you guys know, the watermelon is going to come in the same container, but it's going to have the old blend. So it's super expensive to upgrade and change these formulas. It costs about 10 grand. So we have to do it one at a time. I sell like five times more fruit punch than I do the watermelon. So I went ahead and we went ahead and did the fruit punch first and then the watermelon's coming after and this will be a few months down the line. Okay. Um, so if you guys want to try out the new fruit punch, I can open it up for you. Once I'm done with my current bottle of watermelon that I'm using. I'm going to take the fruit punch. So you guys can also see the scoop is much smaller. Okay, compared to, let me go grab the other one real quick. Compared to the scoop size on the old blend, which is this, this is the new blend. Okay, so you're taking less. This is going to be much more uh, soluble. Now, if you guys remember, if you use the pre workout that I had before, um, it like dissolves into your water, right? This stuff is just the same um so yeah that's official you will see the new pre-workout and the fruit punch flavor start going out and um i'm excited to hear your guys's opinions on the changes let me know if you want to pick one up tonight i'll kick you a quick a, a discount and don't forget if you guys really love it I also, by default, offer a discount to all my supplements if you subscribe to them. So if you want to get a bottle every month, you'll automatically get a discount on those supplements. And the option is right there automatically on the website. So all you have to do is just say, check the box that says subscribe and save, and you can get the supplement or the subscription. Okay? So... <clears throat> The company used for your shirts is the same company my friend uses for his shirts. Major back order issues. He says his are backed up too. Yeah, like, so this company, I'll, I'll be straight up with you guys. It's called Printful. And they are the biggest, what you call, print-on-demand supplier in the world. They are historically the best fastest like if you guys remember when you know we first started this business and i was selling shirts and you guys were buying them they were going out like 
the next day. Like, and you're talking about, so the way this business works and the business model works is this shirt, all I do is, is I upload, I design the shirt. So I upload the file with the, the graphic, I upload it, I put it on my website. When you buy the shirt from me, I then take your money and I give their, the cost to produce it to them. They print it and then they send it to you. And I keep the difference. So what you're paying me for is my design and my brand. Okay. Depending upon how many sides of the shirt I print on. So like this one has the flag and then the front. There's no back. They're a little bit cheaper. So you guys will notice that some of the shirts on my website are more expensive. And that's because those shirts are the ones who have the front and the back and the shoulder. The ones that's just the front are the cheapest. And then the front and the shoulder. I think it's like $2.50 to print this on here. So what I do is, is I just scale it and I say, hey, I want to make six bucks per shirt. And regardless of how much it costs me, my profit per shirt is six dollars. So when you buy a shirt from me, I make six bucks. They they keep the difference. Okay, and that's obviously shipping cost you, you're paying for and also the production. Um, so it's a really great business model for me because it takes fulfillment managing printing sending all out of my hands it's not something i have to worry about it's automated it just happens and done i'm not a t-shirt company i can offer branded merch um, for you guys to represent the business and the brand and zero risk so i don't have to go buy you know 50 work harder t-shirts and keep them stored away in my office or my garage or something and wait for people to buy them where now I have this you know X amount of dollars worth worth of inventory just sitting in my space the shirt goes in they print it they send it so let's say as an example I create a shirt design you guys are like that thing sucks I don't nobody buys it it costed me nothing but my time to put that shirt on the website and I don't have to worry about spending the money for the inventory everybody did legs tonight that's awesome tim good to see you man um uh me this shirt's a, a 2x so you can see i've been wearing it all day so it's starting to loosen out in the arms a little bit the number one thing that i don't like about the sizing and just so you guys have context i'm 5'8 230 um is when i wear the 2x it's really big around the waist, right? And so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll pull it up. Um, the 1X, I don't really care much for because it's too tight in the, in the chest and in the shoulders. So the, where, the place where my body is, is I'm probably going to end up having to get start getting my shirts cut or tailored. Because you can see, you know, I could probably bring this in on the sides and it would fit a lot better. Um, most people fit just fine in an XL, but if for whatever reason you order a shirt and it doesn't fit, you can actually send it right back to the address it was sent to you from, and then we can offer a replacement for whatever size. Yeah. He said good for concealed carry. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, that is something I do, except nowadays, man, since I'm, haven't been working in the office i'm just wearing basketball shorts or gym shorts everywhere i go this is like what i wear <laughs> like everywhere we went and did Aaron, uh, ran some errands at lowe's today which by the way i'm gonna kind of throw off the podcast since i'm hanging out here bullshitting with you guys i was gonna end it but i got a couple things i want to show you first thing that i got today i get to put in tomorrow is a pet door for my garage because we have the litter box outside. But more importantly, let me show you something. Be right back.
All right, so check this out. I got it today. I was I went down to Lowe's because the 18 volt batteries that I have for my power tools are all going bad. They're just old, right? And if you guys haven't noticed, they started introducing the lithium 20 volt batteries in all the DeWalt tools. And I'm like, dude, I've got, I don't want to go through and they don't even sell the 18 volt batteries like this anymore, right? This is an old battery. It's like four or five years old. It still works. It just doesn't hold its charge. Um, so what they have now, let me show you this motherfucker, is a conversion kit that plugs into the 18 volt slot. Like I said, I haven't used this one yet. It's literally the first time I plugged it into the drill. But now I can take the new 20 volt lithium batteries plug them into the bottom of my 18 volt drill and feel dude look at that shit look at the kick on it watch this shit Woo, boy now we got fucking some lithium ion power behind our power our power tools man so i bought one of these things today it came with the conversion adapter which you saw let me get this one out first and then let me pop this bad boy out so it looks like this and all you do is just slide it into that spot, the same place where the 18 volt battery would go. And now you can plug in those 20 volt. Fucking stoked, dude. So my Sawzaw, right, it doesn't have, it, there's no way I'm gonna be able to cut through my garage door with, uh, with this battery, because it's so old. Um, so I got that today. I'm excited to test it out with the Sawzaw, see how it performs on the door tomorrow. Yeah, dude, this badass, dude. I didn't think they existed. Bad news is the kit was 140 bucks, but it did come with two of the 20 volt batteries. And I already had a couple of 20 volt batteries from a drift different dr drill set I had. So if you guys are interested in grabbing one of those, they're at Lowe's. They're like 140 for the set. So I get to use my new toy with the pet door tomorrow we're gonna cut a big hole in the door that goes out to my garage so the cats can get out there what happened was is i had a smaller one <laughs> when the cats were kittens right and i put it in there and they'd use the door just fine and it was sweet because the door it would lock so like if i needed to work outside the garage i could just lock the cat door and they couldn't come out and escape uh and then um the cats grew full-size adults and they got too fat to fucking fit through the door and they started shitting inside so i was like oh god we got to change this so i just took the door out right so now i've got this hole in my door that goes out to the garage which is obviously costing me an immense amount of fucking money um so we've i finally made the time to go down there to to lowe's nice air compressor Hell yeah. He said, my nice batteries died for me as well. Yeah, man, this, this drill set I got for Christmas, I think 2014, and I still have it. It's fuck, these things last forever. This drill is perfect. Uh, and it came with the, the circular saw and the sawzaw, some other shit out there. And I, um, so I'm glad I don't have to spend, you know, four, 400 bucks on all brand new tools. I can just get the batteries. And these lithium ones, they charge like twice as fast. Um, like the one that I, the smaller drill that I have, it's a 20 volt. It, the battery, it takes like maybe an hour to fully charge. So tomorrow is going to be project day. It's cutting a bigger hole in my door all right bro rigid brand lifetime warranty and they stand behind it i'll have to check that out man <laughs> he said where's my tim allen grunt what are my thoughts on a two-a-day split lifting in the morning is even in the evening um so 
here's my opinion, right? Is if you have the time and you want to lift twice a day, go for it. Uh, there are going to be some folks who te will tell you like you're overworking your muscles. But here's what I'll say in response to that is as long as your nutrition is in line with your activity, go for it. What you will find is, is if you keep your nutrition where it's at and you're working out twice a day, you're eventually going to burn out because you're not going to, you're not feeling your body the way it needs to be fueled for that type of intense activity. Now, on the other hand, my, uh, my other perspective is if you have the ability to go to the gym twice in a day, um, there's a good chance that you're not working out hard enough the first time. Because I know for me, when I go to the gym and I lift weights, there's no fucking way I'm going to have the energy or even strength to hit it again. I can see a situation where you like go in the, in the morning and do some cardio, you know, run for a half an hour or 45 minutes or an hour or whatever, and then go back and lift later. But if I went and I did a back, a chest day or chest and back day or something like that, and I fucking hit it for an hour and a half to two hours, I'm just not, I'm not going to have the, the, the energy to go back and do like shoulders and arms that later that day. So the code that you'll want to use is save Jennifer. All right. And JC said it from that perspective too. Like if you have the time, do it all at once. Like I said, my advice to you is if you really feel like you have the time and the energy to lift twice a day, um, you're probably going to want to massively increase your carb intake by at least 20% to compensate for the energy. And then also make sure that you're cycling that carb intake in alignment with when you're, when you're lifting. He said, I barely have enough energy to drive home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you saw that or heard, but I said the 10% discount for your supplements is SAVE, S-A-V-E. So if you check out with the discount code SAVE. Um, surprisingly, and then last week I also, I let you guys in on the, on the inside secret for the, uh, what was it? I think it's. 70% off the regular price for my 12 week plans. Um, so normally $100 12 week program you can get for 30 bucks. I thought my marketing guy was gonna freak out, but it did so well that he was like, no nah, man, like if, if you're only giving that to exclusive group and you know, you wanna offer it for that much then more power to you, man. Keep it up there if, there, if, it, if people are responding to it. So I will continue to extend that 70% uh, off 12-week program uh, to you guys. If you want the link, shoot me a message, and I'll give you guys that deal too. Just because I have only so many loyal podcast listeners, I want to make sure you guys are the most taken care of. Hook you guys up. Marion. Excellent question. Am I taking on clients? That was actually the next thing I was going to talk about. Right now, my I am carrying just short of my monthly capacity for one-on-one -on -one clients. Um, I try to make I make sure that I don't overload myself. I actually had just turned a guy away like two weeks ago because I was full, but I had some people finish, so. Um, if you're interested and you really want to um, take it up a notch and work with me one-on-one, -on -one, take please take the time to send me a message and I'll ask you some goals and we can talk about um, what I can put together for you and how it would, what, what it would look like for you. And that, and that doesn't just apply to Marion. Um, if anybody else is interested, you guys want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, let me know. And there's a few of the folks that do train with me, they'll tell you worth every penny uh let's see when is the best time to take your pre-workout 30 minutes before 
30 minutes before, man. It says it on the label. Look. There's a reason these labels exist, brother. I don't know why this lid's not going on. It's pissing me off. Let's see. Directions. Mix one or two scoops in six to eight ounces of cold water. Assess tolerance by taking one scoop. If well tolerated, take one to two scoops. 30 minutes before your workout. Do not ex exceed two scoops daily. I wrote that. <laughs> so that's my advice. This is... These, uh, this, con this container, I actually designed this in Adobe Illustrator. Like, this is my personal design. I made this. Everything that you see on here was created by me. Um, so if you guys buy my supplements and you want to know my guidance or advice, it's on the label. <laughs> you can't go wrong. Yeah, just follow my advice that I wrote on the package. <laughs> It's kind of funny. There's not many people you know out there who could say, well, let me see. What did I write on here? It's actually still a little bit mind-blowing to me that I have my own line of supplements. Especially when, you know, I'll be in the gym or something. Not very many people at the gym know what I do as far as this is concerned. So, like, what do you take? And I'll, like, reach into my gym bag and I'll be like, oh, let me see. Josh Hellyfield. <laughs> this is my pre-workout. You want to try some? I'll give you 10% off. <laughs> so yes, I do take all of my own stuff. Um, I've actually got it sitting in the kitchen next to the sink. My pre-workout routine is to go in there and get all of my stuff in me. And then, uh, oh yeah, and the cool thing is, is if you're a one-on-one -on -one client, it comes with your supply of supplements for the entire time you train with me. And then you also get a... a I'll actually, I'll show you. I actually just made this new design. Let me pull it up here. Uh, where is it? Hold on, let me find it. Here we go. Shirt. Oh, you can't really see it on there. Let me pull it up on here. So if you become a one-on-one -on -one client, one of the things that you get is a shirt in the size that you are when you start with me. And the idea behind that is here, let me turn on my, my screen here for you so you can see it, is the idea behind that is... I want you to take a photo with the shirt when you start and then when you're done you'll take a photo in the same shirt and so it's actually missing something so this is what it looks like there you go so that's what the that's what the failure forward shirt looks like and the only people who are gonna have that are the ones who have trained with me one-on-one -on -one. and that comes with the package so I just created this shirt. It's pretty awesome. Um, I don't even own one because I can't, I guess technically I could have one. I was going to say you can't train myself, but that's kind of what I already do. So i um, super excited to start seeing those shirts pop up, you know, photos of you guys want those. I can't wait to get those things shipped out to you. Uh, I do not have a stem free focus mix, um, but I don't know where my I don't know where my video went. Hold on one sec. There it is. Um, shoot me a message and I can give you an, uh, uh, a hookup on a brand on what we call Nootropic, which is exactly what you're looking for. Okay. Um, yes, absolutely. We can do failure forward outside of a gym. Um, the great thing about custom training means that uh, it's custom to you. So whatever your limitations are, your access is, whatever the case may be, uh, we can build something that is specific to your circumstance. All right. Cool. Thanks for answering. Right now I'm cardio in the morning and heavy in the evening. I just wanted your thoughts about the start your four-week plan. 
here's what I'll tell you. If you're getting ready to start my four-week plan, um, the last thing that you're going to be worried about is hitting it twice. <laughs> All right, I want you to, as you've heard from the folks in the chat up to this point, right, is uh, leg day. Oh, my God, leg day. Yeah, the four-week plan is hard. It's very difficult. Um, it basically introduces a muscle split that most people don't even think to do. And you're talking about major compound movements and multiple major muscle groups per day. Um, you're talking about a high degree of pre-exhaustion using compound movements followed by uh, very intense high density uh, accessory lifts that is going to literally fucking rip you in the asshole. Um, and the four week plan that I offer for free, the, the, the concept and that routine structure is uh, intentional. I actually made the program so that the average Joe can't even finish the routine on the first week. Um, and the reason for that is because for two reasons. The first is because if I'm offering a routine for free and I'm putting my name on it, I have to be able to guarantee success. And the only way I can guarantee success is by making it so hard that you need a walker to leave the gym. If it's too easy, people aren't going to see results from it. If it's too hard and they don't complete it, then they can't blame me that they didn't get the results from it, right? And the second reason I make it that way is because part of progressive overload is increasing the weight, the frequency, weight repetitions or frequency of lifts um, over time. So if we make it so that you're not able to complete all nine or whatever exercises for that day, then you're automatically introducing a progressive overload style of training by adding an additional exercise the following week or two weeks, right? Tapping out. Yeah, I'm getting ready to tap out myself. Enjoy your run in the morning. Thank you so much for sticking around, Dominic. Sorry to hear you didn't take the wife out. Uh, or maybe you did. Uh, if you did, let me know how that went. Uh, when or where can I get more info on Failure Forward? If you're interested in learning more about Failure Forward, shoot me a message, man, and we'll talk about it. Um, he said, that ain't no shit. I'm ex-military, 28 years old, and have a hard time fi finishing 6'5", 230, 15%. Damn, look at big boy. You, we got a BFB up in here. A big fucking boy. Right, Matt? <laughs> All right, guys. Hey, so like I said, if you want to chat a little bit further about Failure Forward, you guys enjoyed the content tonight, shoot me a message, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. If you want to invite to that group to kind of see what it's about, also shoot me a message, and uh, we, will, we will get you started. Uh, next week, I'm going to be talking from more of a specific script. I'll probably do a, a much larger scale announcement. We'll have more people watching. Uh, we're going to talk about fulfillment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about fulfillment as it is specific to investing yourself. Okay, so next week's podcast, you know, I'm going to kind of ride the line where we you've been seeing this trend of self-love or, you know, taking care of yourself first or prioritizing yourself. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to counter that. And my goal is to discuss with you how by investing in your relationships and the people that you love, you're actually investing in yourself in a way that's going to offer a much higher return on investment of time and energy. Okay, so if you guys are interested in listening and hearing about my opinion on that and how investing in others is much more important than investing in yourself to a degree then make sure that you guys are ready for a listen next Tuesday. And I'll probably go live sometime this weekend to talk about some other stuff. So make sure you guys, if you haven't already, you have the ability on Facebook to turn on post notifications. So let me show you real quick before I jump off of here. I just got your order, Jennifer. Thank you so much. 
Um, shit. I got so many messages here. Uh, so what you can do is if you go to the JJH Lifts Facebook page, view as, okay. There should be an option on there. I'm trying to find it. Let me go to somebody else's page to see if I can see it. I might not be able to see it because it's my own page. One sec here. Let me let me see here. Um, I'll just go to like a random page like Grunt Style. Everybody knows Grunt Style. Okay, so their page. So if you go to their page, you should see this button. Give me a second let it focus in hold on I may need to turn down the brightness on my screen there we go okay there's a button right here where it says following okay and then if you hit uh, okay here we go so if you hit these little three buttons right here okay I know it's hard to see on the screen you'll get a menu right here and you'll see a button that says following. If you hit that, you'll get a window that allows you to turn on post notifications. And then down here, you can actually select where it shows up within your newsfeed. So if you change it to see first, instead of just following, what'll happen is, is every time I post something on my page or, my, or, my, or my, on my page, like a video or a live video or something like that, you'll see that first when you open up Facebook. And the reason that's important is because if there's like things that I'm posting that you're looking forward to, like next week podcast, where I say I'm gonna release a video on how to do X, Y, or Z, you know for a fact that you're not gonna miss it. So the way that Facebook's algorithm works is it's by default going to show you content from people, friends, or pages that you follow that you most engage with first. So if you wanna see more of something or someone, it's actually in your best interest to like or comment or share on that post because now Facebook's gonna say, oh, hey, this person enjoys seeing that, so I'm gonna show more of that. Does that make sense? So one way that you can get around that, because I know a lot of you guys aren't necessarily huge on engagement, you just kind of consume the content, which is fine, but Facebook may think like, hey, he doesn't really engage with this stuff, so maybe he doesn't want to see as much of it, which means that you're in turn going to lose out on some of the quality content that I'm pushing for you guys. So one way you can get around that is by turning on post notifications. That option is also on Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, you can do it there too. Okay. So anyway, not, uh, not to keep you on, I've already been on here for an hour and hour and a half um jc i le le josh legit cares yes i do brother i really care about every single one of you guys um and like i said looking forward to the podcast next week and i'll stay in touch with you guys over the week and i look forward to your messages about getting with me one-on-one -on -one, and i'll talk to you soon have a wonderful night